when the Holy Spirit says there is a blessing right now, anyone with a 100 come, there is a miracle coming now. How many people can pull out $100 right now? Or you will be thinking of a plan of how you can go into the bush and hunt for $100. Very few people will come. Why? Because a hundred dollars is a harvest. But do you have it? And why are you not having it? Because you don't know how to sow. So we live without a harvest. Because we eat seed. We need the grace of God. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, help me. In Jesus' name. We live life of delays, sweating too much. If Esau and Jacob are to die, who will live an inheritance? This one will live no bouquets and spears. That's why on the funerals of Africans, it's very rare, very rare to hear that there was a will that was left behind. We are just buried like a cattle or a cows. No will is left. Because for you to live a will, you must have inheritance. Very few families live wills. And we don't even ask that as pastors because we know we just putting in the ground that person. And for sure what we live sometimes is no bukeris. Zatakapi wa nasekuru, tsimbo zasekuru. That's what they live. No house. If your father died, what did he leave? Problems. A widow in Africa struggles, but a widow in Europe conquers. Here, widows, here, they must be. Under maybe United Nations Fund or something. Why? Because the husband, that's why social welfare is a lot here. You cannot run an African nation without the Ministry of Social Welfare. Because the hunters, they leave no bouquet, is no inheritance. What are you going to leave for your children? Because a good man leaves an inheritance. For his children's children. Do you have something to write on a will except your makeup kit? <laughs> Hello? And your box of jewels, jewelry, a set, even of fake gold. And fake pearls that you bought. Is that an inheritance? What will your children do with that? Why are you not now quiet? Answer me. I say answer. Hallelujah. If a problem happens right now in emergence, where do you go now? Into the bush to jump, to look, or you go into a bank account somewhere? Where do you go today? That is if you have a bank account after all. Where do you go today? Africa. After church service, if you want $2,000, where do you go? You see, after church service, some people, they will be looking for people who have come driving a nice car. After church service, you, are, you migrate to them and you go, please, can you borrow me? And you are even lying. Uh, my children at home, I owe my landlord five months. Please give me 200 or 300. Please, or even three, do you have even a thousand? I will give you next week, next week, ne next week Friday, 
I will give you. Yet there is somebody whom you promised last week that that Sunday you are going to give them something. You are now lying to another one. You will give them next week Friday. That's why in Africa it's very rare to have rich people worshipping in the churches. Because they are chased away by people. Because for them to be rich, they would have discovered the art of farming. So that's why they have harvest. So most African churches are full of hunters. Hunters, they know where to find a prey. When they look the way a person is dressed, Money can come out. And after church service, they look at the car before, oh, they are parking this car. And after church service, you see five people are at that woman. Please, mama, dollar, dollar, mama, please just give me a dollar. After that, when she goes by the other corner, she is bummed into a man with a beard, a man with a family. She is also, he is also asking, mama, please give me a dollar. Yet he's producing children and many children also at home. But he can't produce a dollar. Can you please give me a dollar, mama? Dollar, just a dollar. I want to go home. Walk back home. That walking will wake your brains up. Never lend money to a person whom you never saw giving tithe. He will never give you back that money. Some of you, how many people do you owe money here? What time do you go back home? When I finish preaching, before I bless the church, you sneak because you are afraid. To meet people that you borrowed inside here, that you owe money. Africans. So their churches, they remain with poor people because the rich people get tired of giving and out. So the churches end up with average people. Poor average without anyone even to support. Especially when they see someone who gives too much. It's the target that this one uh, can give. And now you see what they do. They follow that person. That's the spirit. And say, you, you are giving too much into the church. Can't you see you are losing? Do you know what they are trying to say? They are trying to say, can't you see people like us are also around? Why are you not also giving us? And after they discourage you, the next thing, they are coming to ask for money. Do you know why they don't want you to continue giving? Because they don't know what you are doing. You are, this is what is making you to have what they want to ask for tomorrow. That harvest is you are receiving it by giving. So then they want to stop you giving. They think when they stop you giving, you have more in stock even for them to get when they ask tomorrow. It's not that they love you or they are giving you advice. They want you not to give so that you don't empty yourself too much for them to get something also. And we play each other this demonic poverty tricks in the church. We discourage each other. Not because we really love that. Any person, even if it's your relative, discouraging you from giving. They are trying to say, can't you see we are also there? Why do you give big things? They don't tell you direct. It's indirect communication. Hmm? Why are you giving to the church? Ask, ask them next time. Can you explain further? What are you trying to say? Then they will tell you, can't you see your sister? She's suffering. Even, can't you see your mother? 
Or can't you see your father? That they don't have. Are they soil for harvest? Poor people in the Bible, according to, to Deuteronomy 25, verse 19, poor people and widows and fatherless, they, are, they eat harvest, they don't eat seed. There is no widow, including your mother or my mother, who has a right to eat God's seed, who gave them that spiritual qualification. When you read Deuteronomy, when you reap your harvest, in the field, underline your harvest, that came from seed, and forget a sheep in the field, do not go back to get it. It is for strangers, the fatherless, the widows, that the Lord your God may bless you in the, all the work of your hands. You must have sown a seed to get a harvest. Widows, fatherless, which are orphans, they don't eat tithe. We don't tithe to orphanages. We tithe into the God so that we get a harvest to go and give orphanages. Are you hearing me, business people that are here? You don't use your tithe to buy instruments. You use your tithe to sow a seed. And you get a harvest. Then from the harvest, you go and give. Because a harvest is plentiful. Anyone can eat from a harvest, including widows, strangers, poor, and you remain with your own. Don't give seed to the wrong people. Lord, no spiritual famine. Can we stand on our feet now?